Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I have a special league. This one is dedicated to Discord mod Rain. Rain has been with me supporting my content in the Discord, being awesome, basically since the beginning. I can't remember a time where I had a community Discord that he wasn't in it and being a great member of that community. The Boston Roll Discord is a huge part of what my channel and my Patreon and everything offers. There is discussion 24-7. They run mock tournaments and no banless modern. And there's a lot of really cool stuff going on over there. And it's not possible without the Discord mods. This league was chosen by Rain. I gave my Discord mods each a, a video for the channel. And Rain wanted to see some Boros Monarch. At the time, Boros Monarch was the boros deck to beat but since then since we had the original conversation experimental synthesizer has been printed and this deck can no longer become the monarch but it really doesn't need to experimental synthesizer draws more cards than the monarch does and this deck just has a very clear plan to get opponents dead let's talk about that in the pauper realm there are multiple boros decks there's what's called boros bully which is kind of a token graveyard centric Faithless Looting Rally, the Peasants, Battle Screech kind of deck. There is the Boros Monarch deck that Rain originally asked for, which uses Palace Sentinels to become the Monarch and just tons of white and red removal to keep the Monarch forever and just bury your opponent in cards. And then there's Boros Bounce. This deck has existed as long as Glint Hawk has existed, basically, where you get these cheap threats. One white for a 2-2 flying. That's a good deal. One and a white for a 2-3 flying. Also a good deal. But these cards have drawbacks. When Skyfisher enters the battlefield, you have to bounce a permanent you control. When Glinthawk comes into play, it dies unless you return an artifact you control to its owner's hand. How do we turn this drawback into an upside? With cheap cantripping artifacts. Cards like Golden Egg, Icker Wellspring, Spare Supplies, Wedding Invitation, they all draw cards when they come into play. Draven Inspector generates an artifact for Glinthawk, and it's a Good thing to bounce with Skyfisher. That turns the drawback of setting you back a permanent into a boon because you turn this card into a cantrip by doing a little extra work. This was already an existing pauper deck that was perfectly presentable in the format. And then Neon Dynasty give us Experimental Synthesizer. This card kind of reads like someone in Wizards of the Coast was like, I play Boros Bounce. What is the nuttiest nonsense I could possibly print at common? To supercharge that deck and this is what you get one red artifact when synthesizer enters or leaves the battlefield exile the top card of your library until end of turn you may play that card then there's some flavor text at the bottom which is two in a red sack this make it two two white samurai creature token with vigilance activate only as a sorcery synthesizer comes into play flips the top card of your deck you can play it this turn and when it leaves play, which means when Glint Hawk picks it up, when Sky Fisher picks it up, when you sack it to its own ability, there's a bunch of ways to get the back end of this trigger. Exiling a card and being able to play it this turn is worse than just drawing a card, because drawing a card is you can play it whenever. Like there, the time restriction on Synthesizer is non zero. We are going to miss some amount of the time. But this thing costing one really supercharges the deck and how quickly you can bounce your Glint Hawks and Sky Fishers and get them into play. If you play Popper, you'll know that flying is a huge deal in the format, and two and three toughness are huge deals in the format as well. Most of the flying creatures in the format are one ones. They're fairy creatures. Most of the attackers in the format are one twos or two twos. Like we're we're looking at like Ninja of the Deep Hours or Battle Screech tokens or like there's there's a bunch of things. Uh Moon Circuit Hacker is a two one on the ground. There's a lot of things that just can't get through a two three flyer. This is a control deck where you need to block in the sky. It's an aggro deck where you want to attack in the sky. And the end game is just burn. 
four galvanic blast, four lightning bolt. You get some chip damage in with your flyers and then just roast the opponent when the coast is clear. This deck is really cool. Tight little engine into, in a tight little package. I'm glad I get to play it on the channel. I wanted to play Synthesizer. I don't think it's going to get banned, but it's definitely a very good card, and I'm excited to play it while it's hot and fresh. Let's jump into this league. I am on the play in round one. I'm going to keep this hand. This is so nutty. Like, I'm actually kind of, like, giggling with joy at how exciting this hand is. I get to play Rustvale Bridge, and... Then I can decide if I want to take a swing with Synthesizer or just get Wellspring down. I'm probably just playing Wellspring. Ooh, nice. Yeah, I'm just going to Wellspring. What does this card actually do? Target creature can't be blocked this turn. All right, yeah, I'm going to lead on Wellspring rather than Invitation. They do the same thing on the front end, but if my opponent just randomly a Shatter or some shit, I want to at least draw a card. I do kind of want to find a land drop here. That'll be great. Opponent seat of the Synod Chromatic Star looking like affinity over there to me. Yep. Affinity's pretty scary these days. It's just like kind of a Rakdos deck now instead of a blue deck, because you don't even really need Thoughtcast anymore. There's so many black cards that have similar effects. But Glenhawk is nice. How can I wiggle this turn around the most? I could get two looks for a land off synthesizer. I'm gonna do that. Golden Egg, that ain't it. Flint Hawk, pick up Synthesizer. Trigger, found the land, hell yeah. And Thraven Inspector gets in. That's the difference between a one and two mana enabler. Ooh, that was hot. <laughs> Just draw two cards, turn on my Glint Hawk. Nasty. Opponent's got a Thought Cast. I don't have any removal yet, which I'm a little worried about. Finding some of the, the Lightning Bolts in the deck to answer their, their payoffs is going to be important. And the sideboard is pretty stacked for affinity, just four dust to dust. We are not playing over here. Another thought cast. They're going off. And then they Galvanic Blasted my Glint Hawk that already drew a card. I'm up a card there. Not that I think this deck is particularly concerned about that. I'm missing a land again. I'm gonna go for Synthesizer. Like I can Synthesizer a Skyfish and get two looks at lands. Or just Skyfish right from exile. Had it the whole time. Trigger. Where's the hand found the land? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, just being able to beat up on the land count in these decks is so crazy too. I'm not going to replay Synthesizer now. There's no zeros in the deck and not a whole lot of upside to just having it in play. I hadn't really talked about it or considered it specifically, but being able to hit your land drop off this on these low resource games is so messed up. Oh wow. They're like Gear Seeker affinity. That card is not in every affinity list anymore, but it is very powerful when it shows up. Got another Hawk. Synthesize. Exile Great Furnace. I will leave that there for now. In case I find a better land to play. At least that one's in the tank. Pick up Synthesizer. Seeker of the Way. That's a good one. I'm going to play Seeker. Play my land. And I'll attack with my Flyers. Or Flyer. I'm going to need Seeker to shred a little bit, get really big, gain me some life to win this game. I am 18 cards into my deck and haven't seen any of my 8 bolts. Getting over the finish line through giant creatures might end up being a challenge. Deadly Dispute, sacking a land, okay. Probably just taking 9 here. I could chump with Thraven Inspector. Yeah, I'm not convinced Thraven Inspector is getting better than gaining 5 life here. Okay with that. I would really like to untap with Seeker, but I think it's unlikely. But yeah, cast down, wow. Yeah, they are all the way Grixes. Gurmag Angler, wow, this is a brew. Okie dokie. They are. They're up to some stuff. All right, there's like Galvanic Blast. Is it too late? Let's start synthesizing. Die Fisher. <laughs> It's funny because my opponent probably thinks I'm super lucky, but I'm actually just like the ones in my hand are rotting. Okay, uh, I'm going to play the Den, and I'm going to play a Skyfisher picking up Wellspring. Like I'm out of mana, I don't need to replay Synthesizer again. Pick up Wellspring, and I'm going to attack 
I have to win this game by attacking because I can't really stabilize this board. I guess I could have just zapped the Mirror Enforcer, but 5, 10, 14. They can attack me to 2 if I just don't block. And 6, 10, 11, 12. I'm actually just one damage short of winning. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 6, 10, 13. Okay, I am going to block one of the fives with a Sky Fisher because I need another burn spell. The smallest burn spell in my deck does three. So the difference between attacking for 10 and attacking for 12 is one burn spell either way, which I know that I need. I'm just going to send one of these upstairs right now, the Galvanic Blast. I want all my mana available on my turn. I'm dead to a counter spell, a removal spell anyway, so might as well know what's up. Okay, okay. Uh, that's a start. Let's synthesize. Great Furnace. Sky Fisher. Pick up Synthesizer. Seeker. Great Furnace. I can play Seeker. I don't need to play Seeker. I'm going to attack, see what happens. Attack with all my creatures. Do you have a removal spell? There are three, and I can play around Metallic Rebuke. I have enough mana. So, Galvanic Blast upstairs. Moment of Truth. Actual counter spell, my goodness. Okay, I'm in trouble. Here's the Seeker. And dead to everything. Oh. Okay. Bummer. Actual counter spell. This, this is a deck. I'm going to block the two biggest creatures, and then I'm dead to Galvanic Blast. Unfortunately, I can't even trigger to get lifelink. No, uh, no instance in my hand. That actually would have done it, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that was a close one. It took Counterspell to get it done. Like, actual Counterspell. Metallic Rebuke's not enough. We did play to the out. Uh, needed to find a second bolt that turn. Okay, so normally I would just pile up Dust to Dust, but Gear Seeker Serpent and Gurmag Angler are not Dust to Dust targets. Gear Seeker does get Pyroblasted. Dawnbringer Cleric, Destroy Target, Enchantment, Exile Card, and a Graveyard gain 2 life. Didn't really see enchantments. Their graveyard, I don't think I can pressure it meaningfully enough. And the relic is not nothing. Yeah, this is kind of tricky. Like, Mirror Enforcer is in their deck, but so is Ermag Angler. And wow. Where am I going to find room for four cuts? Sideboarding is tough because every card in this main deck is so tight. Makeshift Munitions isn't going to kill anything in their deck. This is one of the more powerful cards that exist in the Popper format. It downshifted from Uncommon in Commander Legends, and it's just really insane. I guess the question is, how often is like some Nickel and Dime going to win a game? And Nickel and Dime would have won that last game. That is actually true. Like how, how thin can I go on these enablers? Because the payoffs are bad without the enablers, but... The deck does have a lot of enablers, and Synthesizer on its own just can solo a game. Seeker is really important. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. Let me know in the comments if you're a Boros Bounce expert what you're actually supposed to cut here. I just feel like every creature matters, except for even Inspector. Like, all of the creatures that might actually attack matter. All the burn matters, because you have to cheese over the finish line. Ooh, the Mono White Hand. But Egg can filter mana. I'll keep this. I regret it, but let's go. Just gonna planes go here. I could Ancient Den Glint Hawk pick up Ancient Den, but I think having a 2-2 in play is not as important as hitting my land drops. And I am gonna lead on Seeker. Because then Egg can gain additional value if Seeker's gaining me life and starting to reduce their life total. Uh, they did have Galvanic Blast. Okay, uh, there's a trick here where I can Glint Hawk. Pick up the Ancient Den and use that to be my land drop for the turn. It's not ideal, but I mean, it's a play. The other option was playing Egg and hoping to draw a land to then do anything else, but I'd rather guaranteed add to the board. Ooh, no land drop past the turn. I'm gonna attack. Cool. And I think I want to Thraven Inspector and Glint Hawk here. They would have to destroy three artifacts in response to Glint Hawk in order to 
make it fizzle. It wouldn't surprise me if they have like a shatter effect here. If I had a one drop to play, I would pick up the den, but I don't, so I'll just grab my egg. Deadly dispute. Draw on three cards for one man in the end step, casually. They could have done that on their turn and tried to hit a land drop, and they chose to leave out man instead, so they do have some kind of interactive spell. Oh shit. We're in trouble. Yeah, that's a good one. When I'm already hurting on mana too, there's just no, nothing is sacred in this world. Gotta hope to punch over the finish line. Yeah, they missed a land drop too though. Basic Mountain would just be a great draw here. Or Boros Garrison. That was neither of those things. Yeah, they can kill my clue for free next turn as well. Yeah, I just gotta mash over the finish line. If I didn't pick up Egg last turn, if I picked up Fountain or er, Den instead, like I would have still replayed the Den. I was never going to play around Gorilla Shaman. But I could have used Mena to filter Red this turn. Because I just really didn't think that's what, how this game was going to go. Their beatdowns continue. They're discarding to hand size again. Which is both a giant relief and absolutely terrifying. There's dust to dust that I'm never going to cast, ever. Going to keep hitting them in five point chunks and hope I can burn them out at the other end. The lightning bolt and munitions in my hand are both helpful in that regard. All right, now we're picking off my, my beat downs. Come on, land. Basic mountain. Gurmag angler, that's a real card. All right, I did find basic mountain. I'm not going to show them that until after I attack. They are showing... Metallic Rebuke right now. I'm going to Golden Egg. Because, like, drawing a card is good here, and fixing mana is good here, and if I flush out the counter spell without caring too much about the result, that's also good. All right, cool. Now I'm just loaded up on fire. I can deal five to my opponent, and Egg does give me two red to work with. We're at the point of the game where they're going to be just rolled up, but. Luckily, they do have to answer the Glint Hawk. That's not a freebie. Okay, they answered the Glint Hawk. Angler's going to put me to 13. I'm not blocking. I am attacking. Just one damage here is good. Like the difference between 6 and 5 is the difference between Galvanic Blast being lethal or not. And now I can protect my burn spells with Pyroblast. If they tap mana to Gorilla Shaman, then I win. Oh, they were too smart. They went to their turn. Now they have mana up to interact with me. Well played. I will lightning bolt you in response to that. It went to two. And my land's dead. Backing for five. No blocks. Going to test this hand right now. They have to beat a counter spell. Or they have to have a counter spell that beats Pyroblast. Pyroblast your counter spell. They also have the rebuke. Even if they do, this is going to let me untap into Synthesizer or Munitions. Oh, we did it. Okay. That was tight. Uh, that was a weird low resource game on both sides. Okay, uh, Gorilla Shaman. Got it. Noted. I think this light sideboard plan is totally fine. Like having played through this a little bit. Like if if my mana just wasn't if I didn't keep a two-lander with Ancient Den, then my mana wouldn't have been a problem, and it ended up not really being a problem anyway. I had enough to cast my spells. I mean, Dust to Dust collapsing their mana base is pretty significant, but that only matters if I'm ahead. If I'm behind, it's a terrible draw. Yeah, maybe I just want another Red Blast to win the, the burn fight at the end of the game. Okay, Rustvale Bridge is indestructible. I'm going to keep this. I'm on the draw. I have a synthesizer. I have a lot of looks for my second land. And Rustvale Bridge getting around Gorilla is pretty nice. Okay, Forest Garrison. <laughs> Mr. Garrison's here. I'll spring from them. All right, I would certainly prefer to not play Garrison this turn. So I don't have to discard. Synthesizer. Exiled synth Synthesizer, pick up Rustvale Bridge. Oh, I don't have to discard this turn, but I do lose the card off Synthesizer. But now I'm set up to Skyfish this other Synthesizer back into my hand. Hope they can't. Don't also have Stone Rain in their deck. 
Oh, just a turn three gear seeker serpent. Gear seeker serpent. That's pretty good. But I do have the red blast this game. Oh, dope. Glint Hawk is the nutters. So Glint Hawk can pick up my synthesizer, which can show me a land maybe. Yeah, Rustvale Bridge enters the battlefield tapped. Destroy Gear Seeker Serpent. That was a good turn. Thought cast from the opponent. Opera's so crazy. I was like, yeah, I just had like the best turn my deck's capable of and killed their giant creature, and they still have seven cards in hand. <laughs> Synthesizer, go. Die Fisher, awesome. Attack my opponent's life points directly. Then I'm gonna Skyfish. If they like destroy Synthesizer in response, that's uh a thing that makes the Skyfisher a little awkward, but I'm still pretty happy with the 2-3. Oh yeah, counterspelling that is just fine. Here's the Rustvale vale Bridge from my hand they knew about. Yeah, if they're kind of playing from behind like this, if I'm pushing damage and not dying on the backswing, that's the board state that I want to maintain for as long as possible. Just softening them up for the burn spells. Star. Correct it for blue. What do they need three blue for? Are they just trying to draw cards? Wellspring. All right. Do they have the 4-4? The four four? No. Okay. They're on kind of a clunker over there, which is where I need them to be. Another burn spell. Love to see it. Attack with my hawk first. And then I'm going to skyfish. Pick up synthesizer. You're going to hear that a lot this league. Ooh, another one. I guess I play it. Synthesizer. I really wanted Seeker in, but if I hit an untapped land here, we got it anyway. All right, Lightning Bolt you. This burn spell's got to come from somewhere. And Rustvale Bridge again. They had a Galv Blast for my Fisher. When they're killing my creatures instead of my face, that's good. They're at five, given the composition of my hand right now. I mean, they have counter spells in their deck and whatever, but. I'm mapping this game out like they're at five. There's two more Pyroblasts in my deck to win a counter war with. There's old Joe Grimaggio. There's a 4-4. Four, four. All right, suddenly the balance has shifted. I think I want to start with a Synthesizer, see where that goes. Lightning Bolt, not mad about it. Bolt your face and attack you for dead. I got eight damage over here. They currently have one mana available. Oh, they could Metallic Rebuke. I'm going for it. Light it up. Metallic Rebuke works here. Counterspell doesn't. Red Blast, or Blue Blast does work here. We got the GGs in the chat. And just like that, you poke for two a couple times, and then two bolts, two Galf Blasts later, they're dead. Just a very fancy burn deck. On to the next round. I'm on the draw in round two, keeping this hand. I got lands, a, an enabler, and a couple of payoffs. Great furnace from the opponent. That doesn't mean anything. It could be affinity, could be a mirror match of some variety. Looking like a mirror match to me. I'm going to golden egg instead of wedding invitation here. In case I need to color fix. I'm not sure that I do. All right, they have their munitions in play. I mean, munitions is definitely good, but I have a 2-3 booty here. I'm going to play Furnace and 2-3 booty, pick up Golden Egg. I think, I mean, they missed a land drop as well, so like I think the creature side, the creature draw is going to beat the control draw, but we'll see where this goes. This will be a good feature for how good makeshift munitions actually is in the deck. Oh, all right, this is not a mirror match. This is probably just Divinity. I'm going to start sending bolts upstairs now. Got to soften them up. Yeah, synthesize. Love this card so much. I hate how often I'm going to lose to it, but big fan of the card. I probably shouldn't have played my land there. Now if synthesizer reveals a land, I just don't get it. I was trying to leave up red and be smart, but now I just don't get to play that land. Maybe leaving up red was still smart, but not really where I wanted to be. I have no recourse for this. That's countered. Brago. Thoughtcast. And Wellspring. All right. Yeah, they're on that Wellspring control deck. Still lightning bolting upstairs. Raven Inspector is a good one. I am likely to spend all my mana this turn. Oh, Galvanic Blast. with the. Okay. Uh, I think I want a Skyfish picking up. 
for... Okay, how do I spend all my mana this turn and do the most with my cards? If I Skyfish pick up Synthesizer and hit a land, that does the most? Yeah, I think I'm going to fish first. Looking for the land here. Got there, and that lets me also throw an Inspector. Da -da 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 -da. Four to the dome, two in the air. Suddenly you're at eight. And I, I'm holding the munitions. That's good for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on board right now. Like, if I'm ready to just incinerate all my permanents, which I probably am, that's how you win the game here. Do they have the life gain spell? They do. Yeah, Reckoner's Bargain is a new one. Uh, you gain life equal to the sacrifice permanents, mana value, and draw two cards. So the, the burn strat just slowed down a little bit. But the deck is still firing, just drawing Glint Hawks. Yeah. Rustville Bridge, Glint Hawk, pick up Synthesizer, Golden Egg. I can egg, I could Munitions. Don't really expect main deck discard or counter spells from this opponent. I think I want to sandbag the Munitions as long as possible. I'm going to play Golden Egg first, see what happens with that. Other Synthesizer. I'm going to play out the Synthesizer in my hand. I know I'm unlikely to be able to play the card I get off it, but having it in play for the, the munitions is going to matter. Hope I don't get combo killed. Wellspring. Pretty soon they're going to be at the, like, sack two Wellsprings to kill Glenhawk phase of the game, which is great value if your life total isn't zero. Pop in the egg for red. Deadly Dispute. Yeah, let's just draw three. If I were a control deck, I'd be terrified, but being the, the aggro, like, pseudo-burn deck here, I kind of love every turn they spend mana that doesn't add to the board or kill one of my creatures. And I'm going to attack with all my creatures first. If they're going to cast a removal spell or something, they're doing it now. Or they can just go to four against the Galvanic Blast deck. Uh, I think I just play Munitions here. I don't think they're going to have a counter spell that can counter this. Just start whipping stuff at them. Big one. Two. Okay, they did have the bargain, but they timed it wrong. Now I can just kill them in response. Yeah. I was worried about bargain. Uh, I was probably going to stop at the last one and make them act first. But they, they got antsy and fired off. Okay. Dust to Dust definitely comes in against this version. This mono artifacts over there. Leave No Trace can destroy munitions, if I think that's important. It would also destroy my munitions, so gotta be careful with the Radiance. Dawnbringer Cleric, destroy target enchantment, gain two life. That's actually reasonable. Like, gaining life could matter, and picking off their munitions. I think shaving the less effective of the enablers is the, the line. Like... I just don't really see other cuts in this deck. Maybe you could argue that Lightning Bolt, if it doesn't kill any of the creatures in the deck and it's just a burn spell to the face, maybe you'll be better served with a different card, but I think that every point of burn matters. Like, I, I don't think that Galvanic Blast is cuttable. I don't think Glint Hawk or, or Skyfisher are cuttable. I guess you can make an argument for Seeker. We haven't seen it happen yet in the... The three or four games we've played in this league, but Seeker on one of those like synthesized Glint Hawk, synthesized Golden Egg turns, Seeker is suddenly in for five lifelink. Like, no, uh, that's an important piece. I'm gonna do it like this down on enablers, still have a lot. Hope it's enough. You really only need one though. This hand is super reactive. I'm gonna try it. It'd be a lot better on the play if I could just turn three, exile their two lands. But I'm going to try this as it is. Uh, Rustvale Bridge. Go ahead. And yeah, this lets me bolt their shaman and then pick up bridge to garrison and then next turn exile two lands. That's pretty big stuff. The Karu lands on the draw are usually awkward because you have to discard, but not if you have a card to cast. Oh, they didn't pop their wellspring in response. I wonder if they're saving that for something, or if they were just F6 and not paying attention. 
Either way, I'll take it. That was a free card draw that they did not take. Okay, it's time to dust. I'm gonna go after. I'm gonna target the blue lands. Definitely the black land and blue to go with it. These are the the card draw colors. Fuck yeah, that felt disgusting. Play another one. Yes, yes. Uh, if you're wondering if I'm a complete sicko, the answer is yes. Get them out. Get them out. We having fun yet? Oh yeah, we're having fun. <laughs> On to the next round. <laughs> We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards. And you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the play for round two with kind of a heartbreaker. I am going to keep it though. The Icar Wellspring ties this room together, but I wish I could get these Glenhawks down a little quicker or have some red mana for Synthesizer. We'll get there, don't worry. Could just turn one Glenhawk, no lands, YOLO. Let's make it happen. That's not a real play I'm going to make at any point in this league. I'm trying to imagine what situation I would ever just Glenhawk go on turn one. Bounce my only land to do it. Well, we're, we're going to figure out pretty quick how hard I need to go on Glenhawks. Cartouche. All right, they have some lifelink activity over there. This is the white heroic deck. And at some point, my removal doesn't line up with their creatures anymore. And we're at that point. <laughs> Already in trouble. Golden egg. Okay. Um, Flint Hawk can pick up Ancient Den. And I can play Ancient Den. And then Glint Hawk can pick up Icker Wellspring. And do I play the Glint Hawk? No, they have first strike. No, they have first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. I, this is this race is not winnable. I need red mana. All right, now I just can't do anything. <laughs> Welcome to Popper. Yeah, these these like Bogle cheese decks definitely exist in the format. And if I had red to challenge the Sacred Cat with the Galvanic Blast, this would have been one thing. But that's not what's going on. I could chump chump and then try to gain a bunch of life with Seeker of the way. Yeah, I'm off it. Okay, uh, the no red mana cost me that game. Leave no trace. That is what this card is for. Exiling all of those pesky enchantments. Remember the fallen return target creature and target artifact. Uh, Dawnbringer cleric bouncing that shooting enchantments is nice. I'm trying to think if I want electricery. It's probably good enough. It's just another way to pick off an X1 before it gets large. It might be. I don't, like, sideboarding feels so weird here. It feels weird to cut all these enablers, but that's really the whole deck. It's just enablers and payoffs, and I think the payoffs are more important than the enablers to have in large numbers. Okay, I will keep this one. This one has the enabler. It's ready for payoffs. I can kill their first two creatures. Unless it's the 0-4. Okay, that's not the 0-4. We're good. This is 1-1 one, one flying. Okay. I'm going to play Great Furnace and pass. I want them to commit something to this creature before I zap it. And if they just play a second creature, Electricery might sweep up both of them. I'm sure they know better than to just jam into red mana. Wait. I'm going to play Wedding Invitation this turn. Draw my card. This is a little awkward. Uh, it depends on how scared they want to play. But if they have like an aura and a protection spell, they get to just shove here. Eyes. Okay. Um, Blast can still clear that. Aina Umbra. All right. I will at least test their protection spell right now. They did have it. Okay. Goosey goosey, baby. Time to dig out of this. Uh, Seeker of the Way, get in. Flint Hawk, get in. Pick up the Invitation, and I'm going to play the Crag. Just commit to big Seeker of the Way turns moving forward. If I'm not dead before then. Second Sentinel's Eyes. 4-4 four, four Vig, first strike. No lifelink, no any extra shit. Wedding Invitation. 3-3 three, three lifelink draw card. Or Sky Fisher. Not the worst card I've seen today. 
I'm going to play Munitions, though, to try to get my Seeker bigger than this Fairy. Attack. First Strike and Vigilance are tough. Uh, they have to respect an instant here. But I assume they can deal with one. Just like any trick gets the job done here. Choose a color. Protection from the chosen color. Okay, so they're going to pick red. Oh, they picked white. Hold on. Doesn't remove auras and equipment already attached. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. So that those are just going to bounce off each other. And I don't gain the life. They can't add any new auras to that card. Auras and equipment already attached. Yeah, so they can't add more. Oh, they did just dust to dust me. I'm dusted. Lightning bolt. Okay, so I can kill this thing, maybe. I'm going to bolt it and see what happens. Oh, totem armor. Nope, never mind. That makes it really small. Okay, ancient den. Or sky fisher. Picking up planes. And I'm going to have to... Even possible to challenge this thing in combat? I don't think so. Oh, the first strike is from the totem armor. Okay, so I can... I can't block because we're white. Correct. Correct. Um, all right. Might as well take out the armor. Okay, now it's a 3-3. Still has pearl white, which means they can't protect it. Creature or artifact. Uh, I'm running out of those. I would have to sacrifice all my own shit to kill this thing. Do I want to take another spin on that carousel? I think I want to give this one more turn. See if I can draw something I'm less interested in keeping around. I can go to two and then draw something I want to sacrifice. Yes. Okay. Synthesizer. I wanted the a lifelink attack off of Seeker here. And carousel. What is carousel? Why did I just say that word? Because I said it a minute ago. That's right. Okay. Um Synthesizer, I can sack. Can you with synthesizer? Hold an egg. And then Thraben Inspector can come in. Then I can sacrifice Thraben Inspector. And do I want Clue Token or Glinthawk in play still? I'm gonna chuck the the Glinthawk actually. Okay. And now I get in for five, gain three life. Not a bad turn. Took some mental gymnastics to figure out how to play against Benevolent Blessing. <laughs> that card confused the shit out of me for a while there. I'm going to draw a card with Clue. There we go. I was looking for something to enable Skyfisher better than Makeshift Munitions. And we turned on the Seeker. Starting to pull ahead here. The Benevolent Blessing on white was pretty, like, savage in the wrong way for them. Just shutting off their own protection spells. It's very much just like, here's my thing, can you beat it? Let's go. Egg. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah, they're just conceding. They weren't quite dead, but it, it was close enough. I don't think any of these cards come in. Nah, I like what I got going on here. Dust to Dust is a little scary, but luckily it's my mana that that attacks for the most part. Okay, this hand is just... Ice cold to dust to dust, but it does have interaction, enablers and payoffs, lightning bolts. I wish this red land was untapped, but I got what I got here. Mother. Untap red land? Tilt. Okay, red land go. How big can they make this jerk? It's a 2 2. And what else? And it's a 4 4. Okay, still need an untapped red land. Untap red land. Uh, that's not bad for the future. Not helpful now. Guess I have to wedding invitation. Try to get my metalcraft up. Uh oh, stuck on red. Red, red screwed. Little color screw action here. Uh, now their creature's too big. Man. Untapped red source. Game breaking. Synthesizer. Find me some red sources. Egg is not it. Flint Hawk, pick up Synthesizer. Looking for lands that tap for red. Seeker of the way. Shit. Okay, didn't find a land or spell at all. 
I have to chump block this turn. Unless they can just shove through somehow. Uh, fragmentize. Yep. There goes my land. Okay, they're going a little bit wide. Uh, that does represent lethal. Blocking is required. Still on the market for a great furnace here, but the totem armor protects it. All right, yeah, just run over there. A uh, little awkward mana colors and a really strong start from the opponent. Damaged base removal is generally pretty bad against these white heroic decks. Journey to Nowhere is a card that some versions of Boros play. Uh, that's the best exile based removal in the format. These sort of decks are a reason to be a black deck with like snuff out or cast down, but obviously that's not on our table. Tough matchup and losing the die roll also. Uh, they won the two games they were on the play. I won the game I was on the play, which if my red mana was untapped before they started piling on, I could just answer the first creature. Play draw matters. Okay, next round. I am on the play for round four. And as I was doing my editing of last round, I realized I said it was round two, but it's not. That was round three. I'm keeping this hand. It's great. And I think I want to lead on Thraben Inspector. Like, I can get my Rustville bridge down and then, like, turn two, Wedding Invitation or Wellspring, and then turn three, Hawk re Wellspring. Or I can play Inspector now. And yeah, I think I'm going to wait on the Hawk. I'm just going to get Inspector down because Inspector on the play might get in for like one to three damage. Maybe more if this is a, a control deck. And every damage counts, because we are just a burn deck. In with the Inspector. Let's see what we're up against here. Ooh, uh, a mirror match of some variety. Another Inspector. That's actually great. That lets me get my tap land in right now. Without wasting any mana. Oh, this is... Okay, this is a mirror match, but it might be like an older version. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to play Mountain and Wellspring. I'm looking for an answer to Seeker because the card's a problem. I don't have any of my thousand burn spells right now. Okay, guess the uh, the cheese damage version of this game plan is behind us. Okay, the, this is Journey to Nowhere Seeker. This is just a different build of the deck. They got a lot more bounce synergies with the Radiant Fountains and stuff. Burn spell. Shit. Wellspring. Burn spell. Okay, we're getting there. And I'm not going to block, so I might as well attack. Another Seeker. Just in time, I just found an answer to the first one. Well done. I wasn't going to block anyway. Like, we may look at that in retrospect. Like, it was just a 2-2, two -two, could have double blocked. But a single Lightning Bolt just puts me in the ground. That was not a block I would have taken. Wedding Invitation, let's go. Uh, going to Lightning Bolt the Seeker that can block right now. I can get another Inspector in and my Boros Garrison, or I could pop a clue right now. I think I'm going to keep Inspecting and play Mr. Garrison. Just keep my beats going. I'm not going to walk into a, a Lightning Bolt blowout with a double or triple block. Just going to cash in my clues, answer this thing the old-fashioned way. We'll find the path, don't worry. Munitions is good. Munitions is really good. Okay, Munitions. And I'm going to start chucking Wellsprings at this Seeker. And I drew a, another burn spell too. Life is good. Oh, it's just dead. What's in your hand right now? Nobody knows. Is it just lands? Or just burn spells? Just burn spells is pretty scary. But they could have flurried their burn spells at me for a bigger Seeker. It must just be lands. I'm going to draw a card off Clue with my open mana. Speaking of burn spells. I draw another card with my clue. Yeah, finding Glint Hawk's pretty great. And the Inspector is another Lightning Bolt's worth of damage coming through on Inspector. Glint Hawk, pick up Invitation. We're invited. And Ancient Den, Sky Fisher, pick up Invitation. Hope I don't get burned out, go. Golden Egg. Oh, they might have had a handful of birds with nothing to bounce. That's probably what's actually going on. They're going to unload on, like, Skyfishers and Glint Hawks right now. The Seeker clearly came off the top. Like, they drew Golden Egg for turn and drew Seeker off of Golden Egg. Okay, they didn't unload on birds, so their hand must actually just be lands. Lots and lots of them. 
or 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, they, I actually do have lethal here. I'm going to tap the white mana to play my wedding invitation, though, because red is pretty important. Can they gain life at instant speed? I don't even know the answer to that question. I can makeshift munitions the creature that they block if the seeker ends up with lifelink this turn. All right, they're at 10. I think they're dead. I have the multiple galvanic blasts and lightning bolt and munitions. I'm gonna like strands in response. They don't have enough mana for that. Oh, egg in response. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, if I had sequenced this the other way, they're still dead, but I could have just avoided that entirely. Okay, you're dead. I'm gonna sack the Thraben Inspector who started it all. Boop bop. Light him up. The secret mode on Golden Egg. Of gain three life. Yeah, I was adding to the board and they weren't. The, that unchecked seeker was pretty scary at first, but then it sort of fell off and didn't matter anymore. Is this a remember the fallen matchup? I feel like anything that gets grindy probably wants remember. And this is the definition of grindy. I want some number of dusts. I'm not sure if the answer is all of them. Probably not all of them. I'm going to start with three and just board out the same. Cards I've been boarding out the whole time. So that munitions flicking the wellsprings was a huge part of that game. So I'm going to... I think unblockability is worse than drawing two cards under certain circumstances. And the gain three life was not a rel. Okay, I'm going to do it like this. I, I'm keeping all my Thraben Inspectors in. Just the... Those Thraben Inspectors did a lot of damage that game. On the draw here, I think this is a mulligan. This is the type of hand that if I find a synthesizer or wellspring in the top two or three cards of my deck is a straight banger, but doesn't do anything if I don't. I'm going to take a discipline mulligan here. Okay, much better already. Keep this one, and I think that it's actually Thraben Inspector. Or no, it's probably wellspring, because synthesizer is my my master blaster here okay let's do it this way opponent's got the thraven inspector this game but so do i call an ambulance for both of us Ooh, revoke existence my land that was fucked do not approve um i think i'm gonna wait on the synthesizer till next turn and then i can play it and try to hit a land Revoke's existence is dirty I wonder how many of those they have. Is that in addition to or in replace of Dust to Dust? Oh, nice. Mr. Garrison was a good pickup. Synthesizer. Hit Glint Hawk. All right. That is what it is. But pick up the mountain and pass. Crack their clue. Play to land. And an egg. All right. It looks like we're going to get a big turn here. Okay. Some options include. Seeker land go. Glint Hawk pick up. I think I have to go for it. I'm I'm gonna do Hawk. That gives me the most mana to advance the turn with. A uh, second hawk. That sucks. Um hopefully I hit a white land. Raven Inspector. Damn. Okay. Uh that one sort of sputtered. Maybe I should have just cracked the clue and committed there. Yeah, that revoke existence on my white source on turn two was pretty messed up. And another revoke existence on my synthesizer. Exiled Remember the Fallen. Oh no. I didn't really want that anyway, I guess. But if that exiled like Lightning Bolt or something, I could have at least cast it. But it's okay. Uh, my hand is still really good. Like I can still synthesize and Skyfish picking up the synthesizer. Or Glint Hawk's probably better, because then I can also Lightning Bolt. Up synth. Well, dust to dust. That's too bad. That's gone. Uh, but I can lightning bolt the skyfisher at least. And pass a turn. Like the package to keep shredding through your deck is pretty small. It's just synthesizer and any bounce creature, and you can just draw a million cards. They they're hawking out as well. Boris Garrison picking up Great Furnace. Three cards in hand, one of them's Great Furnace. They're way ahead on mana, but we're pretty equal, and maybe I'm even ahead on cards. Munitions, oh, that's a good one. Is it worth skipping Skyfisher for? I mean, I could Skyfisher pick up Mountain, play Munitions, 
that might be the line. A skyfisher pick up mountain play munitions and then just be patient on the synthesizer. Ooh, they have secluded step in their deck. That's cool. Yeah, you can play that early. Pick it up with garrison. They just revoked my munitions. They've played three revokes this game. That's that's pretty good. It's a lower impact card than Dust to Dust versus Affinity, but in this mirror, you get a lot more selection out of it. Powerful stuff. Wellspring, Land, and Seeker. Let's see if Seeker can stick around for a turn. I did my best to wait as long as I could on Seeker. See if I could bait out other removal spells. And we have gotten a Galv Blast and a Lightning Bolt out of here. They found a Synthesizer. Oh, I found a Skyfisher. All right, now I get a taste of my own medicine. Exiling Spare Supplies. They have three copies of that card in their deck. I only have one. So, very different builds here. Exiling Inspector. And they do have the mana to Supplies and Inspector here. They get every drop out of this. Hopefully I get a big attack with Seeker. I have at least one redraw here. Another one. Wellspring. Seeker. Get large. Bigger. Hmm. I could sack my synthesizer or I could attack and they could double block but they just get blown to hell by any removal spell yeah, I'm gonna make the bluff attack with a, a lightning bolt lightning bolt bluff attack yeah that risk is just too high anyway here's my second seeker showing you I had nothing go I can draw a card with clue I can pop synthesizer Oh, I'm, and I got a draw step, so I'm going to see at least two cards, maybe three, before I have to do anything else. But they are pulling ahead here. The, they're Glint Hawks, fine and Synthesizers, etc. Lightning Bolt, bummer. That kills one of my Seekers. Oh, they want to just cheese me in the air. Take out my Skyfisher. Fair enough. <laughs> or if they, they know they're just going to hit more Lightning Bolts, they might as well take out the Air Force. Go after Glint Hawk this time. Come on, do it. Damn, they figured out that lifelink is more important. Oh, they just had ex tons of answers anyway. Yeah, their deck has the journeys and my do mine doesn't. That is a big difference. I don't think we're dead yet, though. I'm going to trade off because I need to recover material wherever I can. And I can draw a card here. Dust to dust, galvanic relay. I can exile the two synthesizers and then kill the Skyfisher. And the synthesizers are really good. They represent creatures and card advantage. And they would have to hit some sort of instant to cast the card right now. And I'm just going to blast the Skyfisher because that's just what I'm doing. There's nothing fancy to do here about that. The spare supplies is coming in clutch right now. The second mode of spare supplies is really good when you're just farting around. It's just also a clue, basically. Uh, dusted. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Got there. That'll teach you. Kill your bird. Okay, they have revoke existence and dust to dust in their deck. Confirmed. Time to draw a glint hawk. Egg. Okay, they're hellbent, but they do have two spare supplies. Three spare supplies in play. They can draw a lot of cards still. Not a glint hawk. I'm in trouble. Oh, I probably should have played that land. I'm not really bluffing anything in the Boros mirror. And like this deck can draw multiple cards in a turn, so holding back a land is just a mistake. Good thing they had the second dust to dust, so I don't even feel bad about it. I was never winning this game anyway. Two dust to dust, three revoke existence that I can see. They are built to beat this mirror match for sure. Lightning bolt. Yes, guess they're just still not killing me somehow. They're just putting up these Thraven Inspectors as threats. I, I guess I have to keep playing the game. Synthesizer picking up Glint Hawk, picking up the Synthesizer could just get me right back in it. I can answer their next Skyfisher or Seeker. They're out of card draws in play. There's munitions, yeah. That's good. Okay, the fourth Revoke Existence. You got it. Confirmed, there's four of those. Synthesizer. Oh. Raven Inspector is good. 
I eat my clue immediately. Get my land into play. Now I'm blocking. The five turn clock just became a ten turn clock. Oof. Four revokes and three dust to dust. I'm just gonna block. I'm not gonna bolt the other one, not yet. I'm much more worried about a sky fisher. Ooh, a golden egg. Eat up. And play out the great furnace. Egg can gain three life, but I'm not gonna do that right away. I don't need to do it right away, and uh there's another synthesizer, found another sky fisher. Ugh. Maybe I can deck them. I think that's my most reasonable way to win the game right now. One hawk, Jesus. All right, well, if I'm decking them, that is the plan. Glen Hawk's not bad in that world. Hawk. Pick up synthesizer again. Gonna keep shredding. Master Shredder. Yep. Oh, got Vanic Blast. That's a problem. Still synthesizing. Another land. That's not good for them. Good for me. I was wondering if they were gonna bolt my creature or my face, because like pushing the damage with the creatures repeatedly is non zero. And they just went in on samurai mode. Other spare supplies. They're just not even flinching about shredding through their cards. But the burn spells in their deck are probably enough that they can't actually deck. They'll just kill me. If I find my own synthesizer here, there's still a chance. If I have a turn like they just had, then we can get to work. I'm just going to bolt Skyfisher now. If that's going to happen anyway. Might as well spend the mana. Okay. Skyfisher, get in. Pick up the egg. Egg, draw me a card. Ancient Den, not great, but I'll put it into play. I can at least block and gain three life now. Skyfisher. Picked up an egg. Egg. Six cards left in their deck. <laughs> the race is on. Drawing a card with spare supplies. They've cast three lightning bolt, two galvanic blasts, so there's plenty of fire left in their deck. A block, Glint Hawk. Probably just be dead. Synthesizer. Let's go. Synthesizer. Tilt. They don't even have to do anything. I'll just concede. They can just attack, and I lose. Don't even have to have cards. Yeah, the early stunting my mana, and then, like, they had a few big turns that I wasn't able to have. They have a lot more artifact removal than I do. I've learned some lessons. Dust to Dust can come back in. And maybe Seeker is less good than Spare Supplies. Like, I think Seeker is really powerful, but there's a lot of removal in their deck. And Seeker is my only, like, one for one. Everything else is involved in some sort of loop. Oh, this is still a 61 card deck. Did I submit 61 last time, too? Whatever. If it comes down to decking, I'm one card ahead. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, I have a. Pretty reasonable start that is uh, completely obliterated by Revoke. I think getting Seeker down is going to be the key to this, but they are showing Lightning Bolt. I still think Seeker is going to be the key to this. Yeah, they have it. Okay. Disappointing. All right, that doesn't cast Revoke. That's a deal. Synthesize. Another one. Chat. Okay. Well, now I'm in trouble because if they have uh, dust to dust here, every permanent in play is a fair target. They're revoking my lands. I'm kind of grateful for that, I think. Okay, Skyfisher, pick it up. Pick up the synthesizer. Found Wellspring that I can't cast. Egg, okay. That's not a revoke. But they don't have double white right now. That's why we haven't been dusted yet. Multiple synthesizers. Let's hope. We get something going. Great Furnace and other synthesizer. Flint Hawk, yes. All right, cool. We're getting off the ground. Pick up this one and Dust to Dust. No targets for that anyway. Well, one, but not any good ones. Yeah, there's their Dust. Um, I'm going to Galv Blast them on the way out. Got to put this to work somehow. I need a win condition, and it's going upstairs. Okay. Jeez. Jeez. I think I actually want a golden egg and not synthesizer here because I don't know, there's just so many misses on when you have just one red mana. 
Okay, remember when I, like, did, a, like, a victory lap against my affinity opponent I did this to? Now, now I know what it feels like. My own medicine... Yeah, my opponent was just absolutely built for specifically this matchup. Revoke Existence, Dust to Dust, in the max, uh, Journey to Nowhere. They are a much more advanced technology version of my list. Mine is kind of the baseline of this is what this deck can look like, this is what it does, and theirs is like, this is the version that eats the version that eats the format. They're on a different level. On to the next round. I'm on the draw in the final round with a heater. We got the positive record on the line here. Maybe we'll play against something other than the mirror match. Fingers crossed. Get some diversity on the channel. Okay. Uh, my deck doesn't play that card. Bridge or Crag? I'm so shook about Artifact Hate that I think I'm actually going to lead on Crag. I only care about Rustvale Bridge being an artifact for Galvanic Blast or when I'm playing against Artifact Removal. And I don't see a Blast right now. Let's hold on to it. Matic Star. Okay, yeah, this is the Grixis Affinity thing. Little froggy. Little froggy guy. I'm gonna synthesize, see what comes off it. Yeah, land was the best hope there. To invest in the future, because I was gonna lose a card off the synthesizer. Either way. Like, if I played the Glenhawk Bounce It, I can't play the card. So, uh, just hitting a ETB tapped land there, develop and pass with seven cards in hand. Not the worst. I can Egg and Glinthawk pick up Egg. I could Skyfisher pick up Synth. I think I want to Egg and Glinthawk the Egg. Though Skyfisher is bigger than Frogmite. That matters. Okay, I'm going to go Fishing. Kind of awkward that I want to leave up my Land Drop for Synth, but also I couldn't leave up Red. Like if this was Lightning Bolt and I just didn't have a Red Source, that would have been a kind of shitty. A Wellspring and... A Galv Blast. Okay. Wedding Invitation. Let's get started with Synthesizer. Exiled Seeker. I do like Seeker. If I play Seeker, what happens? Well, I lose it if I don't play it, so I should probably just play it. Drop my planes, play Seeker. And I'm going to Glenhawk picking up Synth. I know I lose whatever card I'm going to pick up here, but that's okay. Didn't want that mountain anyway. Played perfectly. 4-4 four, four creature. Yikes. Thought cast. Okay. Another 4-4 four, four creature. We're in trouble. Another thought cast. My god, stop. He's already dead. Uh, do I want to trade Glen Hawk for this? Kinda do. Like, I don't, but I think I it's worth doing. Ugh. Don't feel good about that. Oh god, if they galv blast me. Yikes. Okay. Mistakes were made. Found a land off of that. And Skyfish. I'll another synthesizer. Guess I'll play that. And Garrison. Is Garrison better than Den? I guess it's worth two cards, kinda. Alright, Garrison, pick up basic planes. And now I'm in trouble. Didn't find any Galvanic Blast. Haven't dealt a point of damage to my opponent. They're at the 4 4 stage of the game. Going to 9 from this attack. They've cast two blasts already. Hope that's worth something. Deadly Dispute. Draw three cards for one mana. Good stuff. Munitions. Yikes. I have a serious question right now. Does Popper suck? Like, are these cards too good, or is this awesome? Like, I, I like high-power formats. I'm just... I don't actually know what the pulse on Popper is right now. And I could see folks not liking this kind of power level in the format. Just idle thought there as I play through this league. I'm going to make a blocker. I'm going to lose the card here, but I think I need the Samurai. I'm going to lead back Skyfisher to block Frogmite. And they can just pick off everything at this point with Munitions. And they have Wellspring and Star, so they, they don't even lose cards. They're actually up cards if they do it. Oh, okay, literally dead. Literally dead. I'm out. Okay, on the draw against Affinity without the sideboard cards in the deck yet. That was tough. I'm going all for dust to dust here. This opponent doesn't seem to be on that weirdo drip that my first opponent was with like the Gurmag Anglers and counter spells. I'm just gonna 
be a little cleaner against this one. Do I want Pyroblast in any quantity? I don't think so. Yeah, I think I'm just bringing in my dust and trying to be proactive. This hand, if this Seeker sticks, it's actually like, okay. I'm going to keep on the strength of Seeker and hope we can get some Delver of Secrets action here. Go coast to coast with my aggressive creature backed by spells. Duress? Duress is a card in your deck that you brought in against me? Are we that worried about Dust to Dust? Is that what's going on here? All right, they stripped him munitions. Raven Inspector, thanks for showing up. Basic Swamp is not really how they want to start out games, though. Disciple, okay. Shown them a removal spell. And they put their creature into it. They must have a plan for that. I doubt they just forgot the cards they just saw. They now have perfect information. The two cards that I've drawn since the Duress were the Inspector and the Tapland, and now they're both in play. They know exactly what I'm doing. Blood Fountain can eventually get back Disciple. No land drop. I'm going to attack for three and then fish my Inspector back up. Pick it up, put it down. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Deadly Dispute. Okay. Sacking the Blood Token. Oh, still haven't hit their land drop. This is the weakness I needed. Come on, dust to dust. Oh, they're doing stuff. Blasting my Seeker. Okay. Still interested in Dust to Dust. Or another Seeker. Not mad about it. In for three. I'm going to play the Seeker. I'm not going to get cute trying to cantrip into the extra land when I just have it. If this were Legacy, I might make that play. But in Popper, I'm just going to get on board and push my advantage. Oh, they found a land. That's so lucky. This is bullshit. Eh. Okie dokie. I can... Golden Egg. Yeah, I think I'm going to Egg... I want to push damage here. Do I have lethal? It's very close. I haven't actually counted yet. Let's see what happens. Four, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they're dead. Got it. We'll even draw a mountain. This does four, effectively five because of prowess. If I counted correctly, they are dead for Xaxes. We did it, Jeffrey. Okay, we beat a heinously mana screwed affinity opponent. But that's kind of the plan. The dust to dust are in here to heinously mana screw them. I didn't need it. They did it to themselves that time, but still feels good. I don't think my plan changes. They are a disciple build, but I don't think I bring an electric or just for disciple. I have all these other removal spells. Let's do it. Ooh, a crushing mulligan. Oh, at least it's easy. Mulligan this hand that doesn't cast its spells. Keep this hand. I'm going to send. Ancient Den to the bottom. I think giving myself a little insulation against Gorilla Shaman or Artifact Hate is worth doing compared to turning on Galvanic Blast. Through an Ancient Den anyway. I like I can play two lands here that don't get got by Artifact Hate, and then Dust to Dust is the first spell I cast of Duress. That's why it's in the deck. Strip in the dust. Okay. Makes sense this time. Gonna get Seeker into play. Start the Delvering. The Delvering is over. Blood Fountain. Wedding. Ooh, Spell Pierce. Nasty. The Inspector looks even better now. It was already great to be on curve, but now doing anything instead of doing nothing is really nice. Three cards in their hand. Please don't be several thought casts. Oh no, the Gorilla. I told you. I told you. I tried to play around it. Now they can kill my two things, and I can't do anything. And my hand is two more things that die to Gorilla. Oh god. Oh god. They're hellbent. Okay, that one's indestructible. This hurts. Life is pain. Crack their star for black. It's their blood token. Play to land. They appear to be out of juice. I hope. We do have a second main phase coming. Didn't do anything in it, though. Okay, that's a good one. I'm perfectly content continuing to draw things that don't tie to Gorilla Shaman. Oh, Galvanic Blast was our last card in hand. Well, they're hellbent again. Let's keep going. I'm currently winning. If nobody draws another relevant card for the next 18 turns, I'm winning the race. That's a good one. I'm even okay if Gorilla Shaman kills it. Nice. Uh, do I need to kill Gorilla right away? They can just buy it back with Blood Fountain. No rush here. 
So I'm not killing anything else with the Skullbanic Blast. Yeah, I guess I'll pass the turn. They'd have tapped land. Yeah, this gorilla. The Blood Fountain is actually just fucking up my gorilla real good. The bridge. Okay, now I'm in Metalcraft, even through the gorilla. To take me off Metalcraft, they would have to kill Icker Wellspring, which I'm okay with. Gorilla is also kind of a backdoor enabler for Disciple. Like, Disciple, and then you just like kill all your own artifact lands for one mana piece. That's a thing. They have one card left in hand. Come on, Seeker. Time for something to stabilize and pull ahead here. I could have played my land to play around Metallic Rebuke, but I think running the land out for a thing that they may have top decked versus guaranteed dead in play is not where I want to be. Yes. That is a non creature spell for prowess and a cantrip for my own enjoyment. Another land that does not die to a gorilla. Are they ready to chump lock? Nope. Still still getting roasted. Reckoner's bargain, sacking a furnace. Okay. They draw two cards, don't gain any life. That is scary because if their divinations start chaining into other divinations. This game could fall apart pretty quick. Painter's Edict. My Vector, that's fine. Star. Star made blue. Bellspring. So we're, we're doing stuff. And that Edict can be flashed back next turn. Ouch. Okay. Well, the Edict had that answered anyway. Time to draw a Glint Hawk. Yeah. Mr. Thrabies. Crack my clue immediately. Skyfisher! Uh, Skyfisher should pick up a Wellspring. Like, I could play Furnace, pick up, and redeploy Inspector, but the, the Gorilla can kill clues. I guess if I Galve Blast right now, they can't Blood Funnel, or Blood Fountain for free, the way they could on previous turns. And if they want to Edict, then they can't Bring back their monkey. Wow, didn't Edict, didn't monkey. Interesting. Wellspring. Attack for three. Where do, does this dust to dust go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can take them off flashback Edict. I can't take them off any colors. I could hit Wellspring and a land, and that makes uh, like munitions off the top worse. I think they would have snapped off a Deadly Dispute on their turn. I'm going to hit Wellspring and I guess Misfall Bridge. One of the bridges. Does it matter which one? I don't even know. I'm not going to go after Blood Fountain because they can just activate it in response and that might put the idea in their head to activate it, which I don't want them to do. Figured it out. Get their monkey back. That's why I didn't play out Great Furnace. Monkey is always looming. It's back. Immediately kill my furnace. Makes sense. I'm still pushing damage. Still any hawk or fisher does the whole thing. Makeshifty munitions. Wrecks their board and draws two cards immediately. Okay. Block and sack with Reckoner's Bargain. That does gain an extra life. There's kind of a pause right now like they're thinking. Like they just drew a removal spell and they're deciding if they want to use it. Okay, maybe not. Another indestructible land. Keep them coming. I hope they duress me. Come on. All right, Deadly Dispute. Keeping the, the show rolling. That's what they were thinking about. Like, do they want to dispute into a removal spell in combat? Oh, 4-4. Four, four. Another one. This is where things fall apart quick if I can't keep the pressure up. Synthesizer. Yes! Best card. Don't counter it. Don't counter it. Don't counter it. No! I asked you specifically not to counter it. They have no respect for me or my wishes at all. Opponent is rude. This opponent's also at five. If they attack me to 11, I attack them to two, they put me to three, they're dead. Uh, I'm winning the race right now, but a Galvanic Blast on either side cuts a turn off that race. Not blocking. They also have the gain seven divination card. Disciple. That one also cracks the race open. They are hellbent though. Now's the time. Another synthesizer. Just Galpass. How about Galpass? Seeker. I don't hate Seeker. I also don't like Seeker. 
if I attack with... Yeah, I'm just going to attack with all my creatures. Let's go. Blocking doesn't make sense here, so I don't think they're going to do it. Oh, okay. I was fooled. Like, there's no, there's nothing in my deck that deals two, but doesn't deal three. I guess the, the Skyfisher next turn fits that bill. And they didn't pop their treasure on the way out to drain me for one. Moment of truth. How many creatures are you attacking with? That will answer my question about whether you drew a removal or not. Oh god. Fiery Cannonade. Didn't have an instant. Okay. Uh, we're back to drawing a burn spell or not right now. I'm at three. That block last turn is the difference. Burn spell. Oh, Skyfisher. We're still alive. Skyfish. Pick up Wellspring. Wellspring. Come on. Munitions. Galvanic Blast. Another Skyfisher. Oh, God. Uh, okay. There might be a better trick here. Um, I can attack for two. Skyfish the... Okay. Yeah, all right. Rather than draw a card now, I'm going to attack for two. I'm going to fish up the tapped Skyfisher with the untapped Skyfisher. And then I'll pick up the Wellspring with this Skyfisher. And now I have a lethal attacker and enough blockers and a redraw. Don't draw a burn spell, please. Oh no. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Cease your activities. No! All right. Yeah, that was tight. That was as tight as they get. A really good match, and I was a burn spell short. Their Hydro Blast on my experimental synthesizer. That would have been worth at least three cards, like the Samurai wins the game if that synthesizer resolves, much less the draw two. Okay. Tight League. Hateful, hateful match. Wow. Um... I am not sure what it means for Popper if every deck is built around these indestructible artifact lands and Dust to Dust is a 4 of sideboard card and sometimes on top of 4 revoke distance. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's just a healthy metagame adaptation and it's exploitable with a deck like uh, White Heroic that we also lost to this match. Or maybe it's time for fairies to jump back in here and beat up on these people who have too much artifact hate in their sideboards. Unclear. I'm glad I don't have to make those decisions. This deck is sweet, though. Experimental Synthesizer just felt as busted as advertised, maybe even more so every time I drew it. Like, there were games where I was just, like, discarding to hand size or leaving cards in exile because it's had way too many cards to ever cast, and I love that feeling, especially out of a Boros deck. Boros is not the color that you normally associate with having too many cards in your hand. But this is a very cool deck, very cool engine. Experimental Synthesizer is a potent thing to be doing in the Popper format. And I think it's super cool that this exists. As cool as it is, I don't think it's my style. Like If I had a Popper Grand Prix tomorrow, I would probably play something blue, like Fairies, Blue Black, or Blue Red. I still feel that way. Spell Stutter Sprite, pretty good against Experimental Synthesizer. And Dodging, just... Getting dust to dusted into the ground, especially that mirror match where they had the four revokes and at least three dusts, like, ease. They are not playing around. But that's what happens when you play the new hotness. The metagame adapts to it and it becomes less hot. Hopefully, it's just a healthy metagame thing and not an unhealthy inbred thing. The set is new. I'm not calling for bans or anything, just thinking about how the format looks right now. The, I have heard. Kamigawa Nian Dynasty referred to as Popper Masters or Popper Horizons. And I think that is a pretty apt description as far as sets that you can't just print sets into Popper because the set would have to be all commons and that doesn't make any sense. That's not how sets work. But as far as sets that are chock full of insane role players and archetype definers and stuff, uh, Neon Dynasty is very exciting for the Popper format. Rain, thanks for asking me to to play this. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad I got to synthesize on the channel. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.